How do a Google phone and a Facebook phone compare? I'm Taylor Martin. This is Pocket Now, and this is the Google Nexus 4 versus the HTC First. Depending on who you ask, there is simply not enough stock Android devices available for purchase. Sure, you can hack stock Android onto virtually any Android phone, and even some non Android devices. But that's not the point. A very small fraction of Android phones ever hit shelves how Google envisioned the platform. The one line of devices we all count on to always deliver the latest pure stock Android experience is the Nexus line. The latest Nexus phone being the Nexus 4, of course, running unadulterated Android 4.2.2. Another device that isn't necessarily marketed as a stock Android device is the HTC First, mainly because there are some technical alterations at play. Namely, the HTC First is the first device to ship with Facebook Home pre-installed. The First and the Nexus 4 are geared towards starkly different consumer bases. The First was intended for those seeking a cheap smartphone solution with an extensive Facebook experience, those who don't necessarily need or want a powerful mobile phone. The Nexus 4 targets the nerdiest of Android nerds, the purists who want to hack and mod their phone to no end. But these two devices actually have more in common than what meets the eye. Both the Nexus 4 and the HTC First feature exceptional build quality. They're made of quality materials, glass and soft-touch plastic. The First is notably smaller than the Nexus 4, measuring 126mm tall by 65mm wide and 8.9mm thick. The Nexus 4, with its 4.7-inch display, is 7.9mm taller, 3.7mm wider, and 0.2mm thicker. It's also 15.1 grams heavier than the First. The design of the first is the epitome of minimal. It's a matte finish design with no remarkable features. The sides and back are mostly bare, and the face is also minimal, with Facebook and HTC's own take on the typical Android button scheme. Three capacitive buttons, a leftward arrow for back, circle for home, and a short line for menu. The Nexus, of course, features on-screen buttons, so its face is also fairly minimal. But the plastic chrome trim around the edges, chrome buttons, and speckled glass pane on the back definitely make it a more flashy device. It also has chamfered edges in the soft touch trim. Both fit nicely in the hand and are easily used one handed, though the Nexus 4 does call for a little more stretching to reach opposing corners. As far as design and build quality concerns go, the Nexus 4 and HTC First are evenly matched, though we have to give the First a plus one in the durability department, as the glass on the back of the Nexus 4 has proven problematic for some. We also have to take a point away from the HTC First for the awkwardly placed micro USB port smack dab in the middle of the right edge. Even though the Nexus 4 is often considered a high-end device, a flagship if you will, the specifications are fairly evenly matched as well. The Nexus 4 packs a 1.5GHz quad-core Snapdragon S4 Pro chipset, 2GB of RAM, either 8 or 16GB of built-in storage, an 8MP camera, 1.3MP front-facing shooter, 2100mAh battery, and HSPA Plus connectivity. The first comes with a 1.4 GHz dual-core Snapdragon 400 chip, 1 GB of RAM, 16 GB of fixed storage, a 5 megapixel primary camera, 1.6 megapixel front-facing camera, 2000 mAh battery, and HSPA Plus and AT&T LTE connectivity. They also have your standard connections, Bluetooth 4.0, Wi-Fi BGN, and NFC. But the Nexus 4 also has wireless charging built in with the Qi standard. The Nexus 4 has a leg up in horsepower, but the first comes with LTE on board and its display is noticeably sharper and more vibrant. The HTC First display measures 4.3 inches diagonally and hosts a 720p resolution. The Nexus 4 has a 4.7 inch display with a resolution of 1280 by 768 pixels. The difference in density on the First and Nexus 4 is 342 pixels per inch to 318 pixels per inch respectively. But the density is only a small part of the equation. The colors pop a lot more on the First Super LCD panel and it offers wider viewing angles. That said, the blacks on the Nexus 4's True HD IPS Plus panel are closer to truer black, though both are more of a dark gray. In terms of specs alone, we give the edge to the Nexus 4, but make no mistake, the HTC First holds its own, especially for it being considered a mid-range device. Out of the box, the software on these two devices is quite different. The Nexus 4 comes with completely stock Android, version 4.2.2, it gets its updates directly from Google and is promised to be among the first devices to get the latest firmware updates. It comes with the traditional launcher we're all very used to by now. Seven pages, of which can be filled with application icons, folders, and widgets of your choosing. You can also set the wallpaper, of course. The HTC First comes equipped with Facebook Home as the default launcher. Instead of the home screen being filled with applications or widgets, 
it's filled with your Facebook newsfeed, meaning the content on your home screen is in the hands of all of your Facebook friends and the pages you have liked and follow. The wallpaper is either the picture associated with a friend's status update or their cover photo. And applications are accessed by pressing the home button or tapping in a blank area on the home screen and dragging your profile photo over the apps button. From there, the user to find quick access to favorite applications appears and the full application drawer is to the left. Beneath these light customizations, however, is a mostly pure version of stock Android, not the typical Sense UI found on most other HTC devices. As we explained in a video earlier this week, you can either temporarily jump into the stock launcher by selecting the more icon at the bottom of the full app drawer, or you can disable Facebook Home, either partially or entirely. You can set Facebook Home to appear when you take your phone out of standby, as a makeshift lock screen, meaning the stock launcher will appear when you press the home button, or totally disable Facebook Home in the Facebook Home settings. If you do this, the software on the Nexus 4 and HTC First is nearly identical. Well, it would have been prior to Android 4.2.2. The first runs Android 4.1.2, meaning there are some newer features missing, such as the quick settings page in the notification shade, lock screen widgets, daydream, mirror cast support, the new camera interface with HDR mode and photosphere, and gesture typing in the stock keyboard. Fortunately, a small point update would bring the first up to speed. Also, keep in mind that this difference affects some application support as well. The first, for example, is not compatible with one of our favorite widgets that works just fine on the Nexus 4, Dash Clock Widget. And that's where the Nexus 4 truly has a software advantage over any other non-Nexus Android phone. It will always, throughout its lifespan, be on the most current software. The Nexus 4, with a quad-core CPU, clearly has more power behind it. But that doesn't mean the HTC First is dead in the water, not by a long shot. In fact, out of the box, the HTC First scores higher in the Quadrant Standard Synthetic Benchmark than the Nexus 4 a 55-25 to the Nexus 4's 4553. In the Antutu test, however, the Nexus 4 took the cake, consistently scoring above 14,000 to the first 6147. Outside of benchmarks and in the real world, both devices perform notably well. They power through games and everyday tasks without breaking a sweat, but Facebook Home on the HTC First has its way of bogging down the phone from time to time. We spent some time with Facebook Home enabled and disabled. With it enabled, the device lags, especially when returning home after spending several minutes in an app. With Facebook Home disabled, the phone runs just fine, rarely ever sputtering. Battery life on the two devices is comparable as well. The Nexus 4 manages just about a day of moderate usage. It needs to be charged every night, and if you're going to go out at night, you might want to top off the battery before leaving, especially on days of heavier usage. The HTC First, with its 2000 mAh battery, is about the same, if not a little better. We're still putting it through the test, so keep an eye peeled for the full review early next week for more on the First's battery life. One major difference between these two phones is connectivity. The Nexus 4, sold unlocked or by T-Mobile, comes with only HSPA Plus connectivity. The speedtest.net application doesn't work on the Nexus 4, so we tested the speeds by tethering to an external device and running a speed test. And in the Charlotte metro area, it managed around 4 megabits per second down and 1 megabit per second up. The AT&T LTE-equipped HTC First reached staggering speeds of 56 megabits per second down and 18 megabits per second up. Speeds clearly vary based on location, network, and signal strength, but the First is clearly capable of much faster speeds than the Nexus 4. Finally, the cameras on these two phones are underwhelming, to say the least. The Nexus 4 has an 8 megapixel camera around back. Our own Brandon Miniman scored the Nexus 4 camera below average in his full review in November and nothing has changed. The level of detail is under par, the saturation is low, images appear warm and unnatural, and the software is a tad clunky. That said, the stock Android 4.2.2 camera has several more features than the 4.1.2 camera app, and the 5 megapixel camera on the HTC First is even worse than the Nexus 4. The saturation was higher, and the colors were more accurate, but there's a serious lack of detail in most photos. It's also quick to blow out whites. In anything but perfect lighting, neither of these cameras are worth writing home about, but they get the job done fairly well. It may be easy to discredit the HTC First, seeing as it's not the most powerful device to hit shelves of late, but neither was the Nexus 4, even when it was brand new. It's a pretty balanced fight between these two. What the First lacks in power and performance, it makes up for it with a better display and LTE connectivity. And the Nexus 4 has an edge in RAM, camera performance, wireless charging, and speedy updates directly from Google. If you're after a stock Android phone, both the First and Nexus 4 should at least be on your radar. If you're not a fan of the recent trend of ultra-large smartphones, the HTC First may be your best bet. The only true sacrifices are RAM and the camera. 
But if you need the latest software on your phone, massive development support, and a little extra display real estate for some larger digits, the Nexus 4 is the way to go. That about does it. So if you liked the video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe. And follow us in all the normal places, Twitter, Google+, and Facebook at Pocket Now. Stay tuned for more HTC First coverage, including a full review early next week. I'm Taylor Martin, and I'll see you next time.